Welcome to a how to start guide in one of the best settlement builders and roguelike games out there. As you finish or skip the tutorial in Against the Storm, you can go into the smoldering city and unlock the first upgrade. This unlocks deeds, sort of in-game achievements which let you level up your smoldering city as you do these deeds in different settlements. Then on the world map you will experience the end of the first cycle and start a brand new one. You should start your first new settlement in the tile next to the one with the special effect to take full advantage of it and gain additional resources for upgrading the smoldering city once you complete that settlement. Choose a name for it and pick your difficulty level. The embarkment bonuses are resources or other things you bring with you to the new settlement. I would suggest always going for the food with stone once you unlock it, as food is usually what lacks the most and stone is useful for building roads. As for the choice of a caravan, that depends on the map you are playing on. You can get more info about it in the summary tab and more importantly in the modifiers tab. Here you can see which resources are prevalent in this biome called the Royal Woodland and what can be harvested from the trees besides wood. Also the additional effect due to the presence of a special tile. This one makes it possible to find more glades with fertile soil. Glades are clear sections of the forest surrounded by trees. What this extra effect means is that you are better off starting with many humans as they are the best species for growing crops on farmland on that fertile soil. So we want the second caravan with 8 humans to start with in our new settlement. At the first screen in the new settlement you get to learn what are the bonuses you will gain during the drizzle season and what are the negative effects you will suffer during the storm season. Here we have wild growth which leads to the resource nodes in newly discovered glades getting additional quantities of resources but only if you discover these glades during the drizzle season. The second effect is lightweight wood which lets woodcutters carry more resources they produce during the drizzle season. This will boost their efficiency when delivering goods from their camp to your main stockpile slash warehouse. As for the negative effects, you have the standard looming darkness which reduces global resolve of your settlers by 4 for each hostility level during the storm season. Greater threat multiplies a negative 2 to the global resolve for every dangerous and forbidden glade you discover also active only during the storm season. Melancholy is only dangerous if you don't provide your settlers with complex food and homes, while Eerie Song can kill your settlers unless they have the need for services fulfilled, but only during the storm and only if you have hit hostility level 5. The main ways to increase hostility are by having active woodcutters, opening new glades, increasing the population and spending many years building the settlement. The main ways of reducing it are building additional hearts, having a high queen's impatience and a mix of effects gained by cornerstones or by buying bonus effects from traders. Now we start in earnest. With the latest update to camps and resources you will now see in the starting lead small resource patches which can be collected by small camps which you get unlocked at the start of a settlement. Some resources can be harvested from the same camp, so build the one which covers multiple ones. In my case here, it is the small forger's camp. I also have clay deposits in my starting glade, as well as flax fields, which means I can harvest these and produce both bricks and fabrics. But the first building you always want to construct are two woodcutter's camps. This is because all the starting buildings are constructed from wood and you need wood to burn at the ancient heart or lose the game. The location in which you want to build it depends on the local distribution of small glades, the non-dangerous ones, as they are the ones you will want to open up first. So this is where you set the two woodcutters camps at the trees which are the borders to these small glades. You should increase the build queue priority for these buildings if you place any others because these need to be constructed first. As I don't have stone right now, I will use the regular paths and build them around the ancient heart and main storage because most food traffic will be here and the settlers move faster on roads. 
You don't need to pick the blueprints for the first building right now, as you want to wait and see what awaits you in these other glades first, and also what are the species of settlers you will have in your settlement. Since different species eat different things and like different services produced by these buildings. I know I will have humans and beavers in this settlement, but the third species is still unknown until I get newcomers. The new options at woodcutters camps help you direct their work and the most useful two options are cut only marked trees and marked while avoiding opening glades. Using the green X with a plus sign from the menu at the bottom, I will mark trees bordering on the new small glades. Woodcutters will cut all but the last line of trees when under the cut only mark trees and avoid glades option. The beavers are perfect for the job of woodcutting and can produce twice as much on occasion while the rest of the workplaces have to be manned by humans for now. In the ancient heart, I will disable all the other types of fuel except wood which does burn the fastest, but it is the only resource I can keep producing right now to keep the eternal fire going. Fill all the woodcutters workplaces as you need wood cut fast to be able to build with it. As for the choice of cornerstones, the bonuses for a settlement, try to pick the ones which look like they can benefit you. Since I do not want to have settlers dying, the second option is useless to me, so I have to go with the first. There are some cornerstones which when used at the same time do make that other one useful, but I will leave that one for another guide and you can see all my other tips and guides using the link up here and below in the description. Since the ancient heart acts as a settlement hub, it is possible to upgrade its effect on your settlers living inside its influence range by adding in some decorations. This and having the required population will automatically level up the hub and give you a beneficial boost. I will first add shelters and once they are constructed, the settlers will get a resolve boost while the hub's requirements for population will be met. Resolve is the half circle around the settler's icon up to the left and while it's green, you're good, red means they will leave soon, while blue means they are happy and contribute to your settlement's reputation bar. The blue one down here, which when full means you won the scenario and finished your settlement. The next important thing is the orders from the queen. You always get to choose and should pick the ones that benefit your settlement and can fulfill the fastest while the reward is something you can use. For me here, where I want lots of humans producing food in farms, the obsidian shovel perk for faster crop planting is the best reward. And 3 packs of crops are not that hard to fill, while also getting a boost for future such production from the other perk reward. As for the second order choice, paths don't really give a good reward compared to having 6 humans, which I already have, and the reward of a small farm, which is exactly what I wanted here, as well as more effective mushroom collecting and some mushrooms right now. Third choice is also easy, as completing glade events is much harder than just opening up new glades. The reward might be worse, but at the start of a new settlement, you don't have the resources required to be able to solve most glade events anyway, and you find most events in more dangerous glades. You should always keep expanding the path network between newly constructed buildings, so your settlers can move faster and do more stuff in less time. For the current number of 10 settlers, I will need 4 shelters as each one houses 3 settlers. This is why I will move the woodcutter's camps as that is a free action which you will do many times over the course of each scenario. In the ancient heart, one settler should always be working, currently I have a human here and she slows down the growth of queen's impatience. That is the red bar at the bottom, which if filled means your settlement has failed. If you put a beaver into this slot, he will reduce the consumption rate of fuel in the ancient heart, so the usage of wood will be reduced to keep the fire going. The other two species have their own unique bonuses when working in this building. It is important to keep an eye on your food situation by checking the top left indicators, as that is the number one way to lose your population and fail the settlement. That is why we took all that extra food when starting the settlement as our embark bonuses. The reason I want to burn wood instead of the coal we came here with 
is because coal can sometimes be used to solve glade events and it is hard to produce or find. To get more fresh food, I will now construct the small forager's camp and keep the roots and the broccoli in its range. If I expand the settler's needs interface over to the top left, we can see the types of complex foods and services which increase their resolve. They are different for each species, but overlap to some extent. For example, both humans and beavers like biscuits, while their services don't overlap at all. Humans have the harvesting specialization, so they are the best pick for working in a forger's camp. They have a 10% chance there to produce double the amount of food. We can now complete the order for the queen and get our reward. This also gets us a reputation point, which unlocks another choice of a blueprint. Next building we need is the crude workstation. It produces planks, fabrics and bricks, but it is really inefficient at it. Use it only as long as you have to. These new products are used in construction of all more advanced buildings, which is why you have to start their production so soon. You should limit the production to about a dozen planks and fabrics, while the bricks are used for buildings you rarely get at the start, depending of course on the buildings you unlock for construction. In Against the Storm, most goods and items can be crafted from different ingredients, so use the recipe options to enable the use of extra ingredients to speed up production. Here, I can only make fabrics from plant fiber, which I get from trees at a 10% rate and by harvesting it from the flex field with a harvester's camp. Trouble is, I don't have enough of a population for those extra jobs, but I will get some soon, which is why I will build new shelters in advance. Every drizzle season, newcomers will show up from the smoldering city to expand your settlement's population. The makeshift post is the next production building I need, as there I can craft the packs of crops needed to deliver the second order. These are crafted from raw food, so it's best I do this soon while I still have raw food which isn't being used to produce complex foods. Now I will pick the smokehouse as my first building of choice because no matter if I get lizards or harpies as the third species, they both consume products made in the smokehouse or other products made from these. Second choice is much harder, lumber mill for the most efficient production of planks or carpenter which is less efficient but also has production of tools. Tools which are necessary to solve many of the harder glade events. On this map biome, the Royal Woodlands, these glade events are not as dangerous and less often require tools, so I'm going to risk it and go for the mill instead of the carpenter, but for new players I would definitely advise the carpenter. The ingredients for tools might be hard to get and require several steps, but they make your playthrough easier. My third choice is going to be the cookhouse because of the biscuits for humans and beavers and the skewers which are the complex food both lizards and harpies eat. As for the fourth choice, since I already have the farm, I do not need another building which needs fertile soil, so I will go for the trapper's camp so I can collect more meat and eggs. In the makeshift post, I have to disable production of provisions and building material packs because I do not need those and limit the production of packs of crops to just three. Because the lumber mill does require bricks, I have to enable their production, but I like the resources as I haven't been collecting any clay. But before that, I will place the smokehouse because I will soon have the required building components for it. To offset some of the negative resolve my settlers have because of the storm season, I will build the decorations which are the requirement to level up my hub and gain a resolve buff from that. Few benches or barrels is enough and cheap as they only require raw wood for construction. The important thing is that they are built inside the hub's range. At the smokehouse it is important to disable the production of pottery and incense we can't use now and enable the extra meat ingredients for the jerk recipe. Also limits are important as with a low population a few dozen is enough. The lizards are the best workforce here, but I do not have them yet, and the other species do not have the required specialization. They can work there, but won't get a bonus. With the start of the second year, I finally get my newcomers, but before that, always choose the cornerstone, as some of them influence the newcomers and what resources they bring. This cornerstone is one of those special bonuses which helps you reduce forced hostility I told you about in the beginning of this video. 
Now I will get the newcomer group which has a lizard with him and add him to his best workplace. Making complex foods out of meat. Since it's drizzle season again, I can take full advantage of the forest mystery by now opening the small glades I have cut trees around. Changing the option at the woodcutter's camp to only mark trees and then editing the selection down to only a few trees will help speed up the discovery of these glades. To craft those packs of crops and finish one of my orders, I must have somebody working in the makeshift post. And there we go, the first glade has a small abandoned cache in it and if I supply 6 tools, I can get some raw resources or half a reputation point and some embers. The other discovered resources are more clay and sea marrow, which is really useful in speeding up event solving in glades. Since we need to discover 4 glades to solve another order, I have to move both camps to this side and keep going until all small glades are discovered. The second glade holds extra root deposits and extra meat deposits, which is great as I need that meat for jerky production while the roots are useful for packs of crops. To help woodcutters get to the third and fourth small glades faster, I need to draw a road to them so they can deliver cut food faster and go back to felling more trees. From here on end, you just keep following the same idea. Unlock new buildings by finishing orders. Choose new orders depending on your production and what rewards are best for your settlement. Put settlers to work in the jobs they best fit by looking at the specialization required in the building's info panels. Use the raw resources you have to produce complex foods and keep your settlers' resolve high while building new shelters for new population. With each new discovered glade, more resources open up as well as crop fields where you can grow food or grain. Follow the production chains and build service buildings to use those final products to satisfy settlers' needs for services. For an in-depth guide all the way to finishing a settlement and winning the scenario, use the card on the screen and there are more tips for you in my other videos linked in the description. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!